Hello, welcome to The Truths, I'm Russell Brand. We're in the middle of an election, people are using the NHS as a kind of football. How privatised should it be seems to be the questions and ideas behind both our major parties. But is there another option? Is there funding from elsewhere that could be used to support the NHS? Let's have a look at some truths. For weeks now, the NHS in England has been struggling to cope with the extra demands of winter. The pressure can be seen as patients face longer waits for ambulances and at accident and emergency departments. Senior NHS managers have admitted the system is creaking as winter takes hold. Here's some information about nurses. In London, nurses who took time off because of stress, anxiety or depression during 2014 was up 27%. One in 29 nurses were off ill with stress. Figures out later today will shed new light on whether the NHS is hitting A&E targets. 95% of patients should be admitted, treated or discharged within four hours. But recent months have seen growing pressure and performance has declined. Here we see how the news participates in narrative. The way this story is presented is later there'll be some targets. Will the targets have been met? Let me tell you now, they won't have been. Then what'll happen is people will say the NHS needs private investment and then people will argue about the degree of private investment that it requires. The post-Christmas period often sees an increase in demand for NHS services. And in recent weeks, a number of hospitals, including most recently two in Gloucestershire and Scarborough Hospital in Yorkshire, have had to declare what are called major incidents after facing an unprecedented surge in demand. So you can see that a narrative is being built that implies that the NHS is short of funding and is in deterioration and new ideas are required, and probably that much, we can agree with. We have uh, an independent nuclear deterrent in our country, the Trident submarines, and soon we're going to have to make the decision about whether to replace that on a proper like-for-like -like basis. Uh, and I strongly believe that we should replace it on a like-for-like -like basis. As the NHS struggles against a two billion funding gap this year, the money diverted into Trident, 3.3 billion being spent in the assessment phase, not to mention the two to three billion we spend every year just running our current Trident system, reflects the choice our government has made. So the NHS needs two billion. 3.3 billion is being spent assessing Trident's needs. The Vanguard submarines will be phased out of service in the mid 2020s so a decision on their replacement must be taken by 2016. To design and build four new nuclear submarines will cost an estimated £20 billion. Recently, further funds were diverted into nuclear programmes. This is how it happens. It's not like someone announces it, going to spend some more money on nuclear weapons. This is how it happens. There's an announcement where Michael Fallon, the Defence Minister, says, I'm publishing this thing, the United Kingdom's future nuclear deterrent thing. A copy's been placed in the Library House. It's really sly, isn't it? There's a thing in the library you might want to look at. Well, if you went down the library of the house, what it would say is that the Ministry of Defence has reprofiled 261 million of funding into the assessment phase of Trident. In this case, 261 million of taxpayers' money has been reprofiled from requiring parliamentary authorisation to not requiring parliamentary authorisation. So its identity used to be Parliament's got to authorise funds of this nature being moved over to Trident. Oh, I don't like that profile. Should we give it a new one? Yeah, what should it be? That it doesn't require that? BAE Systems, the British defence giant, has made a fortune selling high-tech military hardware to governments across the world. But the firm has been dogged by long-running allegations of bribery and corruption. Now it hopes to draw a line under the claims by pleading guilty to two criminal charges. BAE are one of the firms that do well out of Trident and missile development and the arms industry. I wonder why that is. Well, it might be that a lot of people that worked for the military or in government now work for BAE. Someone called Sir Sherard Cowper Coles. He's so posh, Sir Sherard Cowper Coles, that none of the words in his name are real words. Look at that, it's just some sounds. BAE Systems earned 43 billion from selling arms to Saudi Arabia and Kalpa Coles, a Sherpa Sherpa Sher, became BAE Systems International Business Director with a particular focus on the Middle East. There's a relationship there. Old Portillo, we remember him. He was a former Secretary for the State of Defence, became a non-executive director of BAE Systems. John Reid, former Defence Secretary, became Group Consultant of G4S, one of the Ministry of Defence's partners in Iraq. Jeff Hoon, former Defence Secretary, awarded billion pound contracts to Augusta Westland and then went on 
to become its vice president. The UK government is determined to pour billions of pounds into upgrading its nuclear deterrent, citing evolving threats from North Korea and Iran. Experts, however, question whether North Korea does pose an actual threat to the UK. Here's a map showing how far its most sophisticated missile systems can reach. It includes Japan and South Korea, but not Britain. Arms firms and the government are an interrelated entity. People that are working government go on to work for arms firms. Arms firms probably have relationships with people while they're in government. So the people that are in government now likely have relationships with them. So that's why there's an entrenched and unchangeable relationship. That's why you never get to vote for, well, can't we just spend that two billion from Trident on the NHS? The British government has released its annual arms export report. The report shows that the UK government sold at least £12 billion worth of military equipment to foreign nations, the vast majority of whom are named on the government's own list of countries of concern, which the Foreign Office allege are major violators of human rights. What's the point of having a list if you're going to continue to sell weapons to them? The minimum thing you could do to a group of people on a list that are, that are only on that list because of human rights abuses is not sell them stuff to do human rights abuses with. Well, we did the list, didn't we? We can't take it to ridiculous extremes. The previous government set a criterion that if there were fears that arms would be used for internal repression, the sales could be suspended. Current Business Secretary Vince Cable quietly dropped this restriction, allowing the UK to sell arms to countries like Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, who feature in the report as large buyers of British weapons. If you care about the Trident issue, there is a march on Saturday, wrap up Trident, there's a demonstration in London. If you'd like to support the NHS, you can support the National Health Action Party, or you can support Unison, one of the unions for people who work for it, or support Frontline First, which uh, empowers nurses to have a voice. This, I think, is an interesting perspective from Satish Kamar, who's like a, a yogi, swami sort of fella, who, talking to the intellectual and campaigner for nuclear disarmament, Bertrand Russell, in the 60s, when all these deals were made, when agreements were made to get rid of nuclear weapons, nuclear weapons, weapons that are still being profilated, he had a conversation with this guy, Satish Kumar, and points out this, nuclear weapons did not emerge from nothing. There's a whole social and political culture behind the bomb. If you take away the bomb without questioning that culture and the dualistic, materialistic mindset which goes Goes with it, you will get something else equally dangerous. What he's saying is we need to change our consciousness, we need to change individuals, then there won't be the fuel in consciousness to materialise these weapons. Bertrand Russell says, we can't make the case for peace in such broad terms. We're in danger of diffusing, dissipating and blunting the argument. We want to stop the nuclear arms race now. That is the only issue at stake at this moment. Now, they were speaking in the late 60s. These issues continue. You can go along to that march on Saturday. Or like me, you can consider what are the spiritual components of consciousness that bring this about. How do you change the machinery of democracy so that the will of the people can be demonstrated? How do you get a properly funded NHS? Is it at the expense of the arms industry? The answer is obviously yes. That is some true news. Subscribe here. Subscribe here. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trolls is like the nose. If the nose was true, I want some trolls. Let's have some trolls.